Diversity at the top helps avoid groupthink and silos. Uh, it challenges the status quo. And while talents are equally spread, opportunities are not. The green and energy transition are key for a sustainable future, but also for an inclusive uh, future. We need the best talents and ideas. Resilience and adaptability are becoming critical for the company's future in building a more resilient, agile and brave world. Good morning and welcome to a very special Eurogas webinar talking about how women can move the energy transition forward. To introduce myself, my name is Sarah Kemp. I'm a communications advisor at Eurogas and I'll be your moderator this morning. I'd like to start with a little bit of housekeeping. Audience members, you are muted, but there is an option to type in written questions and we really support that you do that. Um, I will strive to make this morning a success by guiding the conversation and getting your questions to the right place, so please do send them in. Uh, I've already remembered to unmic myself, so I, I feel it's going quite well, to be honest. Um, so the topic of today's webinar was inspired by a report by consultants McKinsey in October 2019. And this report was titled, How Women Can Help Fill the Oil and Gas Industry's Talent Gap. The research found that in 2008, oil and gas was the 14th most attractive employer among engineering and technology students globally, but by 2018, it was 35th. So that's a fall of 21 places in just 10 years, meaning oil and gas is no longer within the top 30 most desirable industries for those graduates. In addition, it found that compared to other STEM industries, so science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, oil and gas ranked last for female participation at entry level. Now we know that in the energy industry, the need for new types of talent is great. It's obvious that new types of thinking will be needed for a new type of energy system. The industry must deepen and diversify its workforce and an easy solution is to employ more women. The problem of untapped female talent is not unique to oil and gas, but it is more acute. At the same time, we know that companies with significant shares of female leaders outperform their peers so there is an economic advantage to female management. Across society, we're seeing a lot of movement to strive for better at the moment, a better and cleaner and more sustainable energy system, as well as better employment practices and discussions about diversity and equality, not only in gender, but in race and ethnicity as well. So today I'd like to discuss what our industry can do to be more appealing to the next generation of engineers and how we can get the next generation of women to the top. I'd also like to discuss how, in turn, women could be uniquely positioned to accelerate the energy transition. I'm really excited to be hosting this conversation. I think it's an important conversation to have. And to open it for us, we have the first Commissioner for Equality, Helena Daly. Commissioner Daly's role is to strengthen the European Union's commitment to equality and inclusion across our member states. At the start of this year, Commissioner launched the first strategy of our Union of Equality that aims to see significant progress by 2025 towards a gender equal Europe. So there really is nobody better to begin today's discussion for us. And I'm delighted to hand over to Ms. Darley now for her insightful keynote speech. Thank you. Hello, good morning. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Yes, we can hear you. Yeah, you can. Good. Uh, good morning. It's lovely to be with you uh, 
this morning and uh, that's a that's a very good short video which you had is it, will that be online because I would like uh, some people to see it yes absolutely we've got it online and I'm, I'll make sure I send you the link for that good very good okay so we, we find ourselves in the midst of, of several overlapping and related transitions the energy uh, transition, the recovery from the COVID-19 crisis, and a transition to a true union of equality. Successful transitions require real change from individual behavior all the way up to system level. Many of us feel uncomfortable with change because it's inherent uncertainty. Nonetheless, in transition lies opportunity, the opportunity of a greener, more equal, more sustainable future. Change requires open minds. We need to carry the population as a whole on this journey, and to do this, we need to embrace and represent our society's diversity. Change is very much needed when it comes to the energy sector, as we have seen. Energy remains one of the most gender imbalanced sectors, from the technical level to decision-making positions. In the EU, women made up only one quarter of the workforce in the electricity, gas, steam and air conditioning supply area in 2018. This is well below women's representation across all economic activities, which stood at 46% in the same year. In the building sector, where there is high potential for employment creation and the green economic transition, women constitute only 10% of the labor force in the EU. We often hear that women's participation in the renewable energy sector is better, and some even say this offers reason to believe that the gender equality problem will sort itself out as the world transitions to new re renewable energy. There is some truth in this, in that the gender split in the renewable energy sector is better than in other areas. Yet, we are still looking at a situation where in 2019 only 35% of the renewable energy sector was female and only 7% of the leadership positions in the sector were held by women. Like in other sectors, we simply can't just wait for the problem to go away. We must actively work together to bring about change at all levels. This is where social norms and stereotypes come in. The energy sector is portrayed around pipes and plants, electrolyzers and turbines, geopolitics and conflict. And all this tends to be associated with men more than women. But we must work to counter such stereotypes because, of course, women are just as capable to contribute and lead in the energy sector if we break the chains of socially constructed stereotypes. Why is gender equality in the energy sector important? Increasing men, women's participation and leadership in the energy sector is important for increasing the talent pool. More diverse perspectives are linked to more innovation. Further, there are gender-specific challenges in the field of energy which will be more effectively addressed if participation and decision-making is gender-balanced. For instance, gener energy poverty hits women harder as they are more often single parents, affected by the gender pay gap, and thus more likely to struggle with unaffordable energy bills. Women must have equal opportunities to contribute and to benefit from the dynamic economic sector of energy. Despite the existing barriers within the EU, the numbers of women studying STEM subjects appears to be increasing and we are seeing some positive trends in the energy sector's workforce, such as in the renewables industry, industries. In 2017, of almost 15 million scientists and engineers in the EU, 41% were women. There are also positive trends in the energy sector's workforce. Studies show that renewables industries 
are more appealing to the female workforce due to their multidisciplinary dimension as well as the holistic democratized energy future that they represent. And in the energy access context, in off-grid local productive applications of electricity and in rural settings, women are better represented. So we must build on this. The clean energy transition is not only about changing our energy systems, it's also about a just transition, an agenda of societal change with strong synergies with the gender equality agenda. It is about transforming our economy and society to make it more sustainable, resilient and fair. It's an opportunity to question old power relations and create new opportunities, new jobs, new possibilities. We must engage with the whole of humanity in addressing the biggest challenge of our generation in the form of climate change, not to disregard the contribution and talent of 50% of the population. The European Commission is committed to making the energy transition socially transformative. The Commission has made it crystal clear that equal equality between women and men is imperative for us. It's not just words. Nothing makes it clearer than you, than you are in favor of empowering women that actually giving women power and explicitly placing equality considerations at the center of the political agenda. And actions speak louder than words. I am honored to serve as the first Commissioner for Equality under the leadership of the first woman president of the European Commission and as part of the most gender balanced college of commissions in history. This includes the first woman Commissioner for Energy. Our aim is a true union of equality, which means equality for all and equality in all of its senses. In March this year, I presented the EU Gender Equality Strategy, which sets the framework for the Commission's work on gender equality for the next five years. Gender mainstreaming in all policy areas, including energy, is a key principle of the strategy. Implementation of the strategy is supported by the first ever Commission Task Force on Equality, steered by the Commission's General Secretariat, and with designated equality coordinators in each of the Commission's services, as well as the European External Election Service. We are addressing women's employment in the energy sector by collecting comprehensive and reliable EU-wide data. We will commission a study gathering gender disaggregated data on employment in the energy sector. The Commission is also actively identifying how all policies need to take gender equality specific issues into account. This includes the, the energy sector, of course. Within the Directorate General for Energy, an internal equality network has been established, led by an equality coordinator, who in turn is part of the Commission-wide Task Force on Equality. This network will develop operational guidelines for gender mainstreaming in energy policy making and propose concrete actions for the empowerment of women within our institution and in the sector more broadly. The visibility of women in STEM is key for motivating girls to choose STEM education, women to work in STEM and female professionals to pursue their careers in the energy sector. In my previous life as a uh, minister, uh, I, I was the sponsor, uh, the government of, of the country I know best, uh, was the sponsor of the International Day of Girls and Women in Science, which, which was uh, purposely created so that we bring attention, so that we can have more girls in the STEM, in, in the STEM sector. And it's, it's celebrated on the 11th of February. It's, it's a, it's a designated day by the United Nations um, for uh, women and girls in, in science. Anyhow, that, that's an aside from my, my previous life. So this is why uh, the Commission this year established the EU Sustainable Energy Awards to recognize and promote outstanding women in the field of clean energy. We invite all our partners and all relevant stakeholders to work with us to keep the arc of the energy transition bond bending towards a more sustainable and equal future. We need firm commitments from both the public and private sector. These could include a no-man-only panels pledge, 
systematic gender mainstreaming efforts, recruit us or targets. We need to harness the opportunity of the European Green Deal, which offers the promise of new jobs in new younger companies with different work cultures. For the necessary cultural shift to take place, we need to stop imposing traditional male leadership stereotypes on women and men. These stereotypes are neither relevant nor effective as the world today favors collaborative leaders and non-hierarchical organizations. Women do not need to be fixed. It is structures and perceptions that need to change. As the EU is starting on its road to recovery from the COVID-19 crisis, the only way we can ensure a successful relaunch of our economies on the path of digital and green transitions is by being ambitious and putting social matters and equality at the heart of our work. A green, sustainable and digital union can only be a union of equality. Let's not leave any more behind on our road to recovery and towards a transformed society. I thank you very much for this opportunity to engage with you. Thank you. Thank you. That was excellent. That was um, really, really interesting and some fantastic points there that I'm sure will come up during the panel as well. And um, do you have a moment for any questions? I understand you're on quite a tight time, a timeline this morning, but if I could put one question to you, I'd be interested to hear your response. Um, you mentioned the visibility of, of women in Spires Girl, um, and I'd like to draw the parallel of that um, to uh, the EU as a whole. So by putting an emphasis on equality and diversity in the EU, how do you believe the EU therefore also inspires other parts of the world to potentially look at their own models of inclusiveness in society? Well, in, in our, our, our gender equality um, strategy, we also have a part on, on the external uh, part of, of so, so, so we, we really uh, speak with everyone. It's not just uh, within the EU, but but beyond, and and you know, like uh, we we have uh, um, initiatives with with the United Nations, and uh, you know, so so really we are open to exchange best practices and and to share and to learn and to teach maybe. So so we 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 can exchange. All, all the time. Nobody is reinventing the wheel, but what we are, we are reinvent, what we are inventing really is this new way of working, of doing politics, of, of, of having equality at the core of, of everything that we do. And that is why uh, it's, uh, we are calling this commission, you know, we, we speak about uh, in this commission a union of equality, which, uh, as you rightly point out, uh, must be extended b beyond the, the European Union. And, and, and we do that all the time. That's excellent. Thank you. Thank you for answering that question. Um, so, as you, obviously, as you mentioned, uh, that in, in challenge lies opportunity, in transition um, lies opportunity, and uh, it's important to put social matters at the heart. We're seeing that in lots of different areas of society, I think, a, a real discussion about equality across the board. Um, as I mentioned in the introduction, not just in gender, but in, in race and ethnicity as well. Um, do you touch on any of those subjects and are there any initiatives to bring um, different ethnicities more into, particularly into the energy, into the energy sector, as well as looking at the balance of gender? Yes. Um, um... That that is a very important that is a very important uh, issue. Um, just not exactly answering your question, we shall be coming out with an action plan on on uh, anti racism, and and uh, we have another um, strategy on the inclusion of Roma people. So so we are doing various things whereby uh, we, we, the, we speak about the inclusivity of ethnic minorities, not least also in the, in the, in the energy sector. Yes, of course, uh, we, we are aware of, of the fact that, that uh, um, not, not all, all ethnic minorities have the same opportunities um, to um, for education or to or to um, start uh, work in, in in the various different uh, 
um, fields uh, which which are available for for other people you know so so uh, uh, we we concentrate on on that a lot and and we we try to bring in as much uh, diversity also looking inwards uh, at the commission and 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 seeing that that you know charity begins at home and and that that we must have uh, diversity within us and then not, not just you know and, and have strategies for the rest of the European Union member states to um, include include ethnic minorities in all areas and and also that is why we have the task force so whether we are um, legislating or presenting policies on the energy sector we see that the quality perspective including also uh, the rights of ethnic minorities are are taken into uh, account as well so so this this is our mainstreaming uh, process it's it's an uphill struggle i must i must uh, admit but but the the more we speak about eradicating stereotypes which are socially constructed mm -hmm. and so so we can undo all all that because because we have we have created stereotypes so we can unlearn uh, how, on how to live to live with without uh, without stereotypes you know this was of our own doing but and that is across the board we 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 must we must um see that this mainstreaming of diversity is is everywhere mm -hmm. thank you thank you for that i am um, i know it's slightly off topic but um obviously it's, it's such an important subject at the moment diversity and, and ethnicity and we're seeing so much of this in the news that if we're having a, a conversation about equality i think it's important to bring that in so thank you. Thank you very much for your time and your words. Um, as I said, I'm sure they're going to come up for the remainder of the webinar this morning and, and echo many of the points that you've made there. So we won't, we won't take any more of your time, but thank you. And, um, and I'll be sure to send you the link to that video. Thank you. Thank you so much. Goodbye. Have a good conference. Bye-bye. Thank you. And I'd like now to ask the panelists to turn their videos on, please, and I'll introduce you one by one. Thank you. Um, so today joining us, we have MEP Lina Galvez Munoz, the Vice Chair of the ITRI Committee, MEP for S&D Group. We also have Cristina Lobio Barrero, Director of Energy Policy at DG Energy, and Ada Sitikova, who is the Director of Energy for Eurasia at the European Bank for Reconstruction and Development, known, of course, as the EBRD. So we'll go first to you, Lena. Um, you are the vice chair, as I mentioned, of the of the ITRE committee, and you also sit on the FEM committee on women's rights and gender equality. Um, I can personally verify Lena's green credentials when she kindly sent us that short video clip that we used in the promotional trailer. We we quite literally had to edit out farmyard animals in the background. Um, so I, I know that sort of green issues are clearly very important to you. Um, please, could you unmic yourself and tell us a little bit, unmute yourself, sorry, um, and turn your microphone on and tell us a little bit about your work on your committees, which are obviously both highly poignant um, for today's discussion. Well, first, uh, first of all, uh, I would like to thank you for inviting me and, and also for organizing uh, this conference because I believe this, um, there is a real need to move uh, forward the green and energy transition in a sustainable, in a fair and inclusive way, using obviously the best talents and ideas I was saying in the, in the, in the videos. And we know for this McKinsey study you were showing, but also for even Eurostat data and, and, um, and World Bank data, um, it is not the case on oil and, and, and gas uh, where few women are working, few women are leading uh, the sector, and few women are feeling attracted to, 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 to get into the sector, to get prepared also even to get into the, into the, um, into the sector. That will be the best way to, to get women later on into, the, into a top um, position uh, and to have obviously this women we really need to this um, to lead this uh, transition. As I said in the videos, I always like to say that to repeat that as many times as possible. 
opportunity, uh, sorry, talents are equally spread, but opportunities are not. And it is there what we have to work to make possible that opportunities are really as equally as possible spread among the population. But also I think business, from the business side, uh, many things can be done in that um, relation. It's just, uh, just having more women will attract more women. We will make more women to think they will prepare, could prepare for that, they could work for, um, for, for that. Obviously, the problem is, is very complex. It's not simple at all because, well, the, 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 the Commissioner Dali has been explained about the stereotypes, many things. The stereotypes is like feeling something that is natural when it's not, and it's, you know, getting into every single place, making things as, 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 as normal. And it's, it's a problem we have to attack from a demand side, from a supply side, and also working a lot on institutions and, and culture. Obviously, the Army Minister is um, approaching that problem. There is an interesting one even from the European Parliament that was uh, released uh, last uh, April, showing very well that individual decisions of women and men are highly also impacted by social cultural contest. And for instance, in primary education, attitudes towards them do not differ uh, between girls and boys if girls do not endorse gender stereotypes. Uh, but uh, as far as they uh, get into a secondary education, um, is it happened the, the the contrary, and girls start to, to go away from 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 that in just the beginning of uh, of high school. Uh, women lag behind boys in math achievement, changing negatively their attitudes towards STEM. So this, um, so it's, it's, it's obviously education and socialization, as the commissioner has said, uh, are affecting performance um, um, and uh, perceptions. Um, so we, we need, uh, in order to change that, we need more girls to come. So that we have to work really a lot in schools, but not only in schools. And that is maybe a point I would like to do. And I, when we talk about gender mainstreaming in politics, we, uh, we lose many issues. It's, um, mm, we turn to focus too much on employment, but we lose other parts and uh, obviously education we look to, to 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 some parts of education but we we don't look to leisure we don't look to video games we don't look to media we don't look to to social um, uh, media social networks where these stereotypes are not only uh, continuing but they are growing faster and faster and now the consumption is more and more stereotypes because now production can, can be more individualized and it's very easy to change that uh, big uh, traditional from blue to pink uh, in a very clear way. So there are many things really we have to tackle if we really want to, 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 to change it. Just to, to, to put an example on words, even words matters. In, in Spain until in the 1990s, um, computer science uh, were called computer science. And in that decade, it was renamed to computer engineer. And from that moment when engineer were appears in uh, the degree title, women just disappear. It's true that it was not only a change, uh, it, that, it, that change was because that profession was becoming more and more and more important, socially important. Remember this uh, Hollywood movie in the NASA, these computing women, there were women doing the computer all the time, historically. But when that became a, a very chic profession, a very well-paid and, and, and an important profession, uh, it became a male one and it started to be called engineering and then female just disappear uh, from this um, from this one so um, so we have to, to 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 make sure that a lot of things matter because we we have already um a lot of initiatives and they are failing in in fact because we are not improving really a lot on 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 that so we have to as i say we have to look in a more also cultural way in a more um, big um, way. And we have to really work together uh, on, 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 on that. Um, I think one of the most important elements included in the recovery plan presented um, by the European Commission and the sustainable energy, is the sustainable energy transition we know to achieve 
the decarbonization of the economy. A lot of our budget is is going to be put on 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 that. Um, of course, this is the right decision towards the recovery of the industry, the creation of high quality jobs, and the European leaderships in green technologies and sustainability. However, um, women are not uh, not equally present on, on, on there. And we know from many studies that um, when women are present, uh, sustainability is uh, a shift. There is, a, a, just very, very briefly, there is a, a great book of Bina Agarwal, who, who is an Indian economist uh, uh, from Cambridge, the Indian economist, showing that in, in, in Indian forest, when there are at least common um, common Indian forests, when at least there is 30% of, of, of women involved in the management of those forests, those forests are more sustainable than the ones women are not. So this is probably the best in the sense that of real study of how this link between women and sustainability works also in the preferences of women. So maybe why um, there are more women on renewable energies than in oil and industry it was, was the, the commissioner also saying uh, that is more interdisciplinary, more holistic, and it is true that it is um, also the way we, 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 um, we are um, pitch. Um, so in order to, 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 to truly combat the segregation and stereotyping, we need to include um, a third transition, that's my uh, contribution, main contribution or opinion. Um, the uh, Commissioner Dalla was talking about overlapping transition and he was uh, uh, talking about union of equality. Um, I, we, we have all the time uh, talking about a twin transition, digital transition, energy transition, green transition, but we also need a care transition. Uh, we need to move towards a different organization of care because we, ca we can't do a lot of things on, 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 on the market and the business side, just uh, attracting uh, the best women talents or, and so on, so to business or to certain sector. But if the burden of care still remains as unequally share as it is now, we will not advance at all. What has happened now during the lockdown is very clear. Uh, we were teleworking, we were all teleworking, but uh, for instance, I, I, uh, my, my background is from, from university, from academia, and there were some uh, uh, scientific journals that has not received any uh, uh, article, original article from a woman during the, in the first month of the lockdown. But, um, uh, an increased number from men because uh, they were all at home, but they were not doing the same. So we really need to put, um, to really tackle that problem and not to think we are complementary or anything when, when dealing with care. As soon as care uh, still remains our female responsibility, unpaid or underpaid, we will not find any solution. So we really need to tackle that care transition in a very serious way, especially in Europe with an aging population. Otherwise, uh, we will not resolve and we will not advance to this union of equality. Yeah, at least this is my, mm, my um, also while well, we, 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 I don't want to monopolize anymore, but um, um, obviously also we have to, 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 to change the shape of what we think is a worker and what we think is a leader because still are linked not only to uh, male stereotypes uh, but also to male time availability. I mean, if we think it could be only became a leader, the person who spent the first 10 years of their career going around the world and uh, women have some partners that will not follow her all around the world, we will not have those women never in the top. So we have also to, to, to change that, that shape because it's like a shoe, we will, we will never get into there. And if we get, it will be because it hurts a lot. So we really also need to, to, to change um, that. So I, I don't want to, as I said, to monopolize anymore. If you have any questions, I will be very happy to, to, to answer and just say is, is, is um, it's um, difficult being in the in the ITRE committee, but also being in the employment committee and in the fund committee. Uh, I could say it is very very difficult to change things to get the real genuine streaming in in, in policies because at the end is 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 considered something that is not essential, is not core, 
and uh, is uh, it is deleted or just mentioned but not really really done thank you thank you i i certainly do have some questions there but i think um that's also an excellent segue to go to our next speaker and i think if that's okay i'll move on now to christina and then come back to you because i, I do have a question on, on a couple of things that you mentioned um christina when we when we talk about um uh, sort of women in energy policy you are in a, obviously a direct line of, of women reporting there so obviously with the first female um, president of the commission we then have the commissioner kadri simpson uh dita yul jorgensen the director general yourself and of course female heads of units reporting to you so um when we speak about women in the energy transition we are in fact speaking almost directly about yourself and your colleagues could you tell us a little bit about how you see um the work of, of women in energy um obviously in your day-to-day -day job Yes, well, Sarah, thank you. Thank you very much and uh, good morning, everyone. And uh, thank you to Eurogas and to you for having organized this, um, this event. I think it's very important that we take time to, to reflect and uh, not only to analyze the, 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 the reason why uh, there is still some um, lack of quality, but also to, to think together about the measures that we can't um, already boost. Eh? And um, I, I also I want to thank Lina and, and the commissioner for the very encouraging um, words. Uh, this is really inspiring for, for, for me at least, and I think that for, for many women and men, of course, eh, because this is for, for everyone. And um, I, I will start by the positive side. Uh, indeed, uh, and the commissioner has been the very uh, detailed in, the, in her speech. I, I work in the, in the commission and I'm very proud to work in the, in the commission where um, already the last commission started with the commitment to, to reach the 40% of uh, female senior appointment in the commission and to do the same with the middle management and uh, and this commission has made it very clear that the equality uh, between uh, women and men is an imperative so uh, and specific i think that the fact that we have a commissioner for um, equality i think is a very clear signal of the strong commitment of uh, of this uh, commission on the on this aspect and then uh, just coming back to to the the director general when the, where i where i work uh, indeed is um, i have a, for the first time a female uh, commissioner for energy um, a female director general and uh, the two first appointments that commissioner simpson uh, did were two women my colleague katarina siko and myself so i think that this is not to not only words but this is about facts about uh, this um, it's true that well commissioner uh, dali has given very uh, very clear sample and figures that can illustrate the the, the situation um, I want also to insist on one figure that um, make me, makes me think a lot about it. It's according to the, to the World Economic Forum, um, it will take 108 years uh, to close the global gender pay gap. Uh, and only, uh, there is a figure that also really strikes me too, only 34% uh, of global managers are women in the world and only 18% are uh, women, female ministers. And so these are figures that um, concern the whole, uh, I mean, the worldwide, but uh, when it comes to the energy sector, um, it's true that these figures are really worrying. Uh, the commissioner mentioned the famous 22% of uh, women uh, working in the oil and gas industry. And this figure is more, let's say positive when we look into the renewable sector because it's 32 percent but we should not forget that when we go to management position these figures are lower so this is very uh, important um, information to 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 have to have in mind so i here i want to indicate one uh, fact that i think is very uh, important and i i'm sure that all of us will, uh, will agree on to, on it the energy sector is experienced one of the biggest transformation you know that we are the european union has by far the most ambitious target when it comes to the the reduction of greenhouse gas emission energy efficiency renewables both production and consumption 
and um, uh, President von der Leyen already committed in the European, uh, the European Parliament that this um, ambition will be increased and uh, the next week uh, the Commission has planned to adopt the climate target plan where I mean Commissioner will discuss about increasing this um, the, the current target of, um, of greenhouse gas emission reduction. So I think that the energy sector that as you know account for 75 percent of, uh, of this mission has to let's say to do more. And um, here, for me, uh, there is uh, one important um, data that I want to share with you, is that the clean energy transition is not only about changing our energy system, it's, it's broader. It's about transforming our economy uh, to make it more sustainable, resilient, and fairer. And, um, and here I think that the old power relations to create uh, um, we should forget about this uh, old system and to create opportunities, jobs, new possibilities, and, um, and to find um, possibility to offer new solution to really involve women in equality in the energy in the energy sector. So here we think that um, so far it's true that, that there is a lack of women in the decision making process. There is lack of women in the private sector, in particular in the in the management and very high position. As Commissioner Daly has said, women are more affected by, by the energy poverty. Uh, but I also believe that both the Green Deal and, uh, and also the, the post-COVID-19 recovery will offer more opportunity because it's also about democratization, it's about inclusiveness. So I, I think that these are, um, let's say, positive uh, trends that could uh, help a lot to change the current situation. And yes, at the very last uh, work coming back to our uh, internal situation in DDNR, and I think Commissioner Daly also mentioned that we have a small tax force in our DG on, um, on equality policy, and we work very closely with the Secretary General of the Commission, and we try to identify the problems that women have to, to, to work both in the energy sector, both in the public and the, and the private sector. And uh, we are fully supported by our, by our Director General, by our Commissioner. Uh, so I think that um, this is a positive message that we, we cannot, this is not, uh, as I said at the beginning, not only about words, they are facts. And, uh, and thank you, thank you very much again for, for organizing this, uh, this event. And I'm personally looking forward to continue engaging with you in all these uh, topics. Thank you very much, Sarah. Thank, thank you, you, colleagues. Super, yes, I hope so. And I hope ongoing um, engagement and dialogue can absolutely be sort of um, embarked upon because I think that's really important. And um, moving now to Ada, obviously, um, you mentioned in the video that we saw at the beginning of the of the webinar that transforming the economy to make it more resilient and um, sustainable fair, I think you also used the word agile. And um, so obviously, there's a lot of parallels between what you, what you said um, in the trailer that you made for us and, and what Lena and Christina have, have already mentioned this morning. And um, you are obviously the director of energy across the Eurasia region for the EBRD. And I understand the bank's mandate is is to promote a transition towards a sustainable market economy, and that you lead projects on energy and resource efficiency and renewables energy infrastructure. Um, could you tell us a little bit about your work and how, how gender and diversity fits into some of those projects that the bank finances? Thank you. Thank you very much, Sarah, for inviting me uh, to discuss this very, very important and interesting topic of women as part of energy transition. The BRD mandate is indeed to promote transition towards sustainable market economies, and we have a number of what we call transition qualities. In addition to being competitive, resilient, integrated, well-governed, and green, uh, the bank regards inclusiveness as, a, as an official hallmark of an efficient market. So the gender and economic inclusion are embedded already in the bank's economic inclusion strategy. We have a strategy and the separate strategy for the promotion of gender equality. So far, we've supported over 230 projects addressing gender equality, as well as youth or regional inclusion gaps. 60% of these projects focus on enhancing gender equality, while the others also support access to jobs, skills, and services for youth, for populations in less developed regions, for refugees, or other groups. The bank's overall investments, we're talking now money, with economic inclusion and gender component total over 
10.5 billion euro as of today. So we work with clients um, across different sectors, including power, energy, and natural resources. And the um, idea there is to develop work-based training and employment programs so we can provide pathways for women while at the same time address broader skills shortages. So with our help, uh, energy companies attract and retain young female specialists. Uh, they develop and implement dual learning programs with local um, technical universities. They launch early talent management systems to create career progression routes for women, and they embed equal opportunities in their corporate strategies. So at the policy level, we try to bring together employers and education authorities um, to remove lists of jobs prohibited for women. Um, I was very surprised to find out that in a number of countries, there are actual official lists of jobs that are banned for women. So we already are working to change that situation uh, it's not happening overnight, but it's it's we see we see progress. For example, um, as part of our one billion dollar integrated approach for inclusion in Kazakhstan energy sector, uh, we facil facilitate a dialogue between the relevant authorities and employers, and actually managed to remove 75 jobs from the list of 260 jobs banned uh, to women, including um, in the energy and natural resources sector. So we, of course, very aware that uh, COVID-19 can entrench and uh, can increase or exacerbate the existing inequalities. We are facing nearly 25 million jobs worldwide at risk. Um, previous speakers very nicely stressed that the, 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 there might be disproportionate large impact on women, on young people, on other undeserved, un, underserved um, uh, social groups. So, and the, the, the idea now is to preserve the progress achieved today. Uh, how we do it, it's, um, it's prescribed in our, what we call COVID-19 solidarity package. So whatever the bank is doing to address the crisis, we're trying to do it in an inclusive and sort of gender sensitive, sensitive way. And of course, um, Women as part of energy transition, um, I will not repeat the uh, previous speakers and the numbers were given uh, with 22% uh, in the oil and gas sector and 32% in workforce and renewables, the arena data. Um, it's still not, in, it's still, it still, still leaves much to be desired. Um, I also know that from the same surveys that 75% of women and only 40% of men perceive the existence of barriers to women for entry in the advancement in the renewable sector. And this is a high value, high growth industry. So we clearly want diverse talent there. Similarly about the, page gap, the wage gap, um, we, we see that 60% of male respondents think that um, the risk, they assume there's pay equity between women and men, and only 29% of female respondents think that there's, uh, there's actual equal pay. So this is, this is an issue. This is something that we have to consider uh, in a holistic way as part of, of um, energy transition. Uh, women are uh, impacted by climate change and they have to be at the front of the answer towards climate change. So I will, I will stop here. Thank you. Super. Thank you. Um, no, that's a, that's a really interesting interlude into what, um, what I'd like to ask you actually. So obviously in, in the bank, and I'm going to work backwards, I think, um, through the speakers with, with some questions. So Ada, if I come, if I come to you first, um, Obviously, the bank finances certain certain projects, and so there is a financial incentive there to ensure that that gender and diversity and equality um, targets are met. What long term impact do you see? Um, by, so, in, in terms of financial offering a financial incentive, do you also see that those measures are adopted longer term in either the companies or the countries, even even when financial incentives perhaps aren't so directly linked? Thank you. Um, it's a very good question. And um, fortunately or unfortunately, in, in my sector, the, the financing we are extending to companies is usually long term. So anything long term, we try to associate with longer term conditionalities on our clients. And that includes anything we're trying to covenant 
for lack of a better word, on our clients uh, in terms of gender, in terms of skills development, in terms of equality at the corporate level. And it just shows that it takes, I don't know, two, three years for the corporates, for private corporates and state corporates to adopt um, this thinking and to actually start, start doing things on their own, almost. Uh, we see examples um, in, in, uh, with, with Kazakh Utility, for example, where we kicked off the process and then the company just went to become the national champion on their own because they, they really thought there is value in it. Mm -hmm. And of course, um, it's, it's often rhetoric, but at the beginning, that it is just rhetoric, but then it be it's becoming um, reality. And especially when there is um, a sort of covenant or there's a legal obligation to do something about uh, gender at the specific client. We have projects in the renewable sector in Turkey where we are trying to shift the situation around, where we know that there is really lack of female um, um, participation in management, also in mid-level management positions. And that's despite the fact that women uh, are still are going for STEM, uh, STEM degrees, STEM education. Mm -hmm. Just somehow they fell between the cracks and they're not, they're not making it to the technical managerial position. It's still pretty much admin, support type of stuff. So in our long-term facilities, through our long-term loans, uh, we try to put in uh, mechanisms and work with clients. It's, it has to be, there has to be buy-in from the client to adopt this type of uh, the policies. So I mentioned Turkey Renewables. I mentioned Kazakhstan. Um, under our green investments, we pioneered a program in uh, Tajikistan, for example, on the use of climate technology by women entrepreneurs. Um, we attract uh, support of climate funds, green climate fund, for example, or um, clean technology fund, again, in Kazakhstan and Egypt to identify opportunities specifically in the renewable sector. Um, so overall, we, we're trying to help women expand their skills, green their skills, mm -hmm. and, um, and, and leverage this dialogue among all stakeholders, the governments, the private clients, uh, education providers, and all others. Super, thank you. Christina, in terms of um, greening our skills, which is a, a nice phrase I think I'll, I'll be adopting. So we talk about greening our skills, and both yourself and the commissioner mentioned that renewables in terms of employing women do slightly better than the traditional oil and gas sector. Why do you think that is? What do you think is perhaps more attractive to women about the renewable sector as opposed to the traditional oil and gas industry? Well, thank you, Sarah. Indeed, I um, and I think that we have already today a, a difference in the percentage from 22 to 32 in the women working in the energy sector, and this is very, um, very promising and very positive message. Uh, also, we are not there yet. Well, we believe that the Green Deal introduces uh, more, let's say, modern policies, uh, and uh, as I said before, it's not only about um, transformation of the energy system as such; it's also about a new mindset set a new way of uh, of um, considering the way we produce the way uh, we uh, consume the way we live and the inclusiveness of uh, i mean women in the in the labor um, force at the same level so i think that uh, when it comes to to green deal uh, and the priorities that the green deal includes um, it's also, they have also a very strong dimension uh, of the, the modern policies and, uh, and about inclusiveness of uh, not only women, but of course, uh, um, no crime of any uh, discrimination. Uh. So here, I, I believe there is also a very interesting uh, data. I think that um, we have also new, um, many experiences of startups in the, in the sector, uh, very young people um, who are fully convinced that, uh, so I think as as I said before, uh, this old uh, way of working, the old power balance is now um, somehow changed into a new mindset on how we 
we develop the, the leadership in the institution, in the private sector. So um, for me, I think that this is a huge opportunity for, for equality uh, policy in not only renewables, also very new fields in the energy sector, such as energy efficiency. I think that here there are also big space for, for talent, for female talent, and, uh, and we are working very, very hard to, to make it happen in our uh, proposal in the European Commission. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks very much. So you mentioned there's a new mindset on, on how we um, develop leadership. I'm, I'm conscious that we've sort of got five minutes left. So Lena, I'd, I'd like to come back to you and, 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 and end on a positive note, if we can. You did mention that many initiatives are hitting barriers and are hitting blocks and are not working in, in perhaps the way that we'd hoped they would do. Could you tell us a little bit about what areas have had success? and whether you've been able to identify why those areas have had success in terms of either bringing girls into STEM subjects or some of the projects and initiatives you've worked on um, to increase equality. I think your mic is, is still on mute, so you might want to um, yes. mute yourself there. Well, just before answering this uh, successful uh, um, or some successful or possible successful stories, I would like to, to insist uh, um, because the, the were say that the now, now the um, the idea that we don't still need to, 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 to promote opportunities for women and and I would like to insist that we have not to to we, we still need to insist in direct policies mm -hmm. that that equality policies still because still needed as Ida was saying just uh, working um, for this um, in education um, for career progress uh, accompanying women because still are not and we still need to make sure that they are and to show the the ones that are coming that they could they they could be we need to to, to insist in, in mainstreaming because as as far as now the uh, european union policy is, is something hard and warrant to say has been more an employability than an equality policy we hope now that we have a, a gender commission that will be different but so far it has been making possible women to get into the labor market but without changing the rest and like this, it is just not possible because we will enter in a segregated way, just only in some sectors and only in uh, not at the top or very few just in the top. Uh, so we still, and we need also to change. And I'm, I'm, I'm glad to say that the, when you talk about the um, energy transition, saying that it's not all about job, it's, change, it's, it's changing all things. But unless, and I completely agree, but unless we change as well the economic policy and the way we measure economic success, we will not achieve absolutely anything. If the GDP that uh, is the measure for everything is still the king of uh, all policies and all decision, we will not arrive to, to, to anyway, because we will count destruction of our nature as, uh, as e economic growth as still happen. So we really need to, to change everything really, and I, I, will, I will go for it. Um, where we have a, a success, for instance, in, in science, we are uh, increasing. How we are increasing? I think the European Union on, on, on the science, scientific policy has been pioneer and is doing a, a great job um, and just uh, making clear that the person who are evaluating projects uh, the um, people who are in the commissions and everything should be um, equally represented by women and men because if the pe people that are choosing are only men and this was happening before or still is happening in, in many places at the end unconsciously not even consciously even unconsciously they will choose uh, the person who is the authority by, for the society, but also the person that is closer to, to, to them. So we need women in this position, in this evaluation uh, processes, and we really need to make sure that um, uh, women are presented in the, in the, in the teams that um, will be uh, founded. Um, and we know, for instance, that startups and everything is, is very important, but uh, women started are not funded. So we really need to change as well the way we, we evaluate. And, and as I, I go back to this idea of success, we really need to, 
to, to, to do make clear. But I think the scientific policy is probably one of the fields still we need a lot a lot to 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 go but it's probably one of the the fields and also probably in politics uh, the european parliament has much more women now that in the in the past or the commission in top decision now we have a uh, um 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 the 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 college of uh, commissioners is much more equal than any moment and we have uh, a president now we have christina we have many women on top position we have ida so that's that's really showing uh showing up but still a lot a big role to go there is absolutely and then um, I, I think this pandemic has brought about the term new normal we hear this being mentioned quite a lot at the moment the sort of the new normal and i'd like to echo something that the commissioner said at the beginning which is that social norms are learned stereotypes our social constructs and we can unlearn them we can create a new normal um, both in the energy sector and across society as well so i'm conscious that we're exactly at 10 30 um, now so that is the official end of our webinar but i'd really really like to thank um, all of our speakers this morning obviously the commissioner has had to go but thank you to the three of you that are still with us um, for the discussion this morning I've, I've really really enjoyed hosting it and, and hearing what you have to say and thank you to, obviously to our audience um, as well uh, just to wrap up by saying it, it seems um, that overall the, the messages are quite similar, that there is a great deal of opportunity now in terms of um, how we move forward with the COVID recovery and with the European Green Deal. Um, it seems that overall we need a transformation of our economy and our understanding of success. So it isn't, it isn't just about the energy system, but it's about how we, um, how we put energy into our system, I think is, is what I'm trying to get at. Um, and but in for the, for the meantime, how we achieve that is with direct policies that do support um, girls in, in STEM education and, and moving forward into those, into those roles. So it seems to be that that is effectively what um, the three of you are saying co collectively. So we know that 2020 um, has been a challenging year. The pandemic has changed our lives in unprecedented ways and its impact on the energy industry has been significant. Um, and as we've said this morning, this was an industry that was already embarking on change. Um, so I think the response to the pandemic has the potential to accelerate this. Um, and what we've seen this morning is that in a post-COVID era, we will need to diversify not only our energy, uh, but also the workforce that supplies it and supporting the education and professional development of women um, in, is clearly an expedient way to do this. Uh, because as we know, while there's a post-COVID era, there isn't a post-climate change era. Um, so we need the energy transition to move forward and we clearly need women to do that. So all that remains is for me to say thank you again. Thank you very much for joining us. Um, I hope you've also enjoyed this event and I hope you all have a good day. I look forward to further collaboration in the future. Bye. Good thank day you. to all. Thank, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, thank you very much. Bye. Thank you.